Welcome to another edition of INN CEO Talks. Joining me today is Marcello Leone, Chairman and CEO of Bevcana Enterprises, which is listed on the CSE under the symbols BEV, on the OTCQB under the symbol BVN. NF, and on the Frankfurt Exchange under the symbol 7BC. BevCanna is taking the lead in the emerging cannabis beverages market. Leveraging its unmatched beverage expertise, world-class infrastructure, and proven technology, BevCanna develops and launches premium innovative cannabinoid-infused beverages that cater to the next generation of cannabis consumer. In addition to producing infused beverages and building brands, Bevcana is also actively exploring brand acquisitions, strategic partnerships, and joint venture opportunities. Marcello, welcome. You know, you've had a busy Thank month. You. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you so much. It's good to have you here. You know, when I was researching a little bit about where you're at right now, you've had a very busy month, a number of announcements coming out about partnerships and white label agreements. Let's speak to uh, what you've been doing over the last little while and then what's on the horizon next. Wow. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you for having me. Well, we, uh, we've been quite busy. Bev Canna is really a, a diversified, innovative health and wellness beverage and natural products company, Stuart. We, we focus on developing and manufacturing plant-based range of beverages and cannabis beverages, as well as nutraceuticals for both white label clients and our own in-house brands. Um, wow, what have we been up to? You know, it has been, uh, it has been a, a very busy last month. So good news. Um, I think everyone in the cannabis space up here in Canada, you know, getting your standard processing license and being able to uh, be fully compliant at a federal level is, is critical. We were successful in getting that done. Uh, and then we were successful in announcing our partnership for our sales commercial license. Uh, so that was that's exciting, so we're able to go to market. And uh, we also announced recently, um, the phone has been ringing off the hook for uh, people that are interested uh, from uh, larger LPs to small craft uh, 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 entrepreneurs that would like to get into the beverage space. So we've announced uh, a couple of last press releases for our white label partners, and it has been uh, crazy busy on that front. Uh, we have, uh, we're getting ready to launch uh, our Keef brand. Uh, that was a great partnership that we, have, uh, we had developed in uh, the United States, and Keef is, is the number one beverage brand in all of the United States. They have uh, started in Colorado, Stuart. They have eight of the top 10 brands in Colorado and two of the top 10 brands in California. They are the number one brand sold with units sold and volume sold in the U.S. So it's nice that we have that partnership. We're exclusive with them in Canada. We do all their manufacturing and we're getting ready to go to market with all their pro products federally across uh, nationally uh, within the next uh, 45 days, Stuart. So lots of exciting stuff. I could go on for hours for you, Stuart. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, yeah, no, lots, lots, uh, lots that we've announced and lots that's coming. A lot of announcements coming. So you're still early stage in the development of your company and you're already developing these partnerships with some pretty major players. Do you have the ability already to scale up to meet what uh, appears to be uh, quite an exciting and uh, dynamic marketplace? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. You know, I, I look at this industry um, Barrier to entry for our, our space, uh, getting into the beverage space is not easy uh, to have the infrastructure, which we are blessed that we have a, uh, a beautiful uh, infrastructure of our own vertical. We own our own aquifer uh, on our own land. We've got the great infrastructure. We are the largest uh, independent uh, bottler uh, with the, a state-of-the-art bottling facility that has capacity of almost 200 million bottles per annum. We, we, we have a strong balance sheet, which is also nice, Stuart, uh, plus a $55 million. Um, and we, are, we, we, we took the approach getting into the cannabis space when we did three years ago. We're not even on first base yet, Stuart. This is still uh, something that worldly, globally, internationally, the, the, the compliance will come. Regulation will, 
will be federally legal everywhere. It's just a matter of time if we have tobacco that's legal and we have alcohol that's legal. We know that the, the CBD industry and, and the effects of CBD is from a medicinal purpose is so critical. We know that THC will be adopted and people are just getting used to it. So we haven't even heard, hit first base. We took a bit of a different approach. We took a kind of like a, a four pronged legged approach to our, our, our foundation building and our business so that we, we would make sure that we were a revenue generating company uh, and, and that we could uh, uh, make sure that we were in the strong position to scale and grow with this industry. Uh, we do not have a huge burn rate, which is awesome for us. Um, I think we've all seen this industry and, and what can happen on that front. Um, and, and we went out, you know, we're very strong on the CPG side. We, we sitting in front of me are some products, you know, we've had some success over the last nine years with our product, a plant-based a mineral product called trace infused with plant-based minerals. We, we've had some success there and we've in, uh, in over 3000 points of retail in Canada, we're getting ready to launch into the United States. We're getting ready to launch internationally. What's nice about that, Stuart, is that component of our business, which is right over here, didn't require any Health Canada compliance for cannabis. This required Health Canada compliance at the highest level, CFIA, for plant-based innovation of beverages. So what's beautiful about BevCan is we can be in the uh, with our own brand in the cannabis THC space, and we can be uh, in the plant-based normal CPG space so that you have opportunities to have revenue going on a daily basis. And then right. uh, to, be, to be even more competitive in the United States and to get familiar with the market, we ended up making an acquisition that you spoke a little bit to earlier. We made an acquisition uh, for an e-commerce company called Pure Therapy. Uh, it's a direct-to-consumer e-commerce site. It allows us to sell our uh, CBD-infused products, hemp extracts, uh, nutraceutical products, and plant-based products on our website. Uh, we did over $5 million last year in 2020. We have a carryover of over 22,000 customers, recurring customers. It gives us another opportunity to have full exposure to the United States prior to full federal legalization in federal legalization in dispensaries across the United States. And it allows us to sell in Western Europe as well. And then uh, we have another approach by taking our CPG products that you see here plant based, and we're getting ready to launch those in the US as well. And having and this is a real important one, having a partnership and the strategic partnership we made with the number one beverage brand in the United States called Keef beverages. Uh, we're their partner in Canada. We produce everything out of our facility for them and their beverages are tasty and unbelievable. They have eight years of history. Uh, we're going to be distributing those all across Canada. But that so, relationship. Sorry, go ahead, Stuart. Well, I have a question for you because I'm wondering, sure. you know, what is the specific and strategic advantage that we have in Canada in developing the sector now while it's legal here in advance of pending legislation that will open up that market in the United States? What kind of a competitive leg up does that give you? You know, it gives a, it gives us a big leg up, uh, the trial and error and getting it right and making sure that the beverages taste well. But more importantly, being able to comply to all the federal regulations and what is required uh, by the federal government. So all the documentation, all the compliance, this is something that when you're not used to that, you don't start from that aspect of the business. It's a, it's a big awakening when you do. And we're, we're, we, we, we love it because we can speak to it. We know it, we know what it takes. And, when you're talking to some of our partners on the U.S. side, it's going to be interesting because they see that even if you're uh, a company coming from the U.S. coming into Canada uh, or an entrepreneur that, that wishes to develop their own product, there are SOPs that are required and there's procedures that are required for your product to get to shelf and then testing and Health Canada has to approve it and test it and it has to be fully combined. So for us, 
uh, it takes all of that trial and error out of the process. So we're right. we're we're well positioned for for the United States, and, well, uh, I, and we can be a lot, a lot and we can be great to, to help all of our other customers and, and guide them through the process. Well, I can't help but think that you've gone through all those processes here. Uh, well, your American potential competitors really are kind of handcuffed. They can't even get out of the starting block yet because legislation doesn't allow them to do that. And so the level of expertise, the systems in, that you'll have in place are going to be uh, far ahead of those of your competitors. That that 100 percent. And, you know, in the U.S., a lot of our, our the businesses that are there and some of the beverage companies that have been around for eight, nine, ten years, you know, in different states that they operate, you know, they've been doing it the way they've been doing it, according to, to those those state regulations. Once it's going to become federal and it's going to be wonderful globally, while well, the standard of, of compliance just becomes a whole different level. So it's going to be an adjustment period for them. But uh, the, the, the ones who have been around and know what they're doing, uh, to learn and adjust is not difficult. It just takes time. Well, we're still hoping that they're going to be like trailing behind you because, you know, we want a, a strong Canadian presence in this market. And it looks like you're uh, capturing that, that market, which, which looks to have enormous potential. I was reading that it could be somewhere between 4 to $5 billion market within the next five or six years. Yeah, I think uh, when we look at the end of prohibition for alcohol many decades ago, um, look at look at the alcohol industry today, several decades later, we're still we haven't even hit first base. I agree with you. The adoption of uh, and the application and usage, the interest level from the consumer is there. Uh, they'd like to be able to have a different way to onset the, uh, the cannabis that is not a delivery system of perhaps smoking it, et cetera. They would like to have social consumption lounges. They would like to have the opportunity to have a, a beverage with uh, the regulated amount of uh, milligrams by the federal government that they can also drink if they choose to drink a, 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 an alcohol beverage. This is what's coming. People are excited about it. And it is one of the uh, fastest growing categories. So, yes, uh, it will be one of the most dominant categories in the space. So, Marcello, one of the questions that virtually everybody who watches these interviews asks is, so why is this the right time for me to uh, be putting my money into your company? Well, that's a that's a that's a good question. <laughs> I, I would say that uh, I would say that if you're interested in the cannabis space, if you're a long term investor, uh, if you you see what these new uh, opportunities in the world are with these uh, the white space of the new opportunities. We are not even at first base. So if you can, you know, if you can be first, if you're good to be long term, and and if you're with a company that has, you know, great leadership, we've got a great president, uh, Melise uh, Panada, great lady from uh, comes from Pepsi. We've got great uh, leadership that comes from Johnson and Johnson, well established CPG brands, very 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 disciplined and very very professional. In, in their, uh, in their uh, uh, opportunities and what they do. Um, you know, I, I, and, and if, you're, if you're looking at where, where could we go and we haven't hit, even hit first base, wow, um, what, what could it look like, Stuart? I mean, it, it, you know, I, I go back and I have to use the analogy like I do with so many of my peers. It's like, if we had the opportunity and we were as developed of a global world that we are today, and we would have had the opportunity to be first, not even on first base in the alcohol sector, many of us would have said, wow, that would have been great if we would have been able to be there at the beginning of that cycle. Well, here we are in the beginning, Canada, the first G7 country in the world to be federally legal, and many states in the United States that are, uh, that are uh, approved for recreation or for medicinal, we don't have federal yet, and the rest of the world, Mexico just became uh, 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 compliant. Uh, they're opening up their doors. And there's lots and lots of jurisdictions that are going to open up. Where else would you like to be, Stuart? This is the, the, the future. You know, this is the right. future. And I, love, and I love the delivery method because the whole industry for innovation of health and wellness is so important, whether it's with plant-based products or whether if it's with CBD and cannabis, the cannabis plant. And utilizing that for medicinal purposes and for CBD to get the pain out of our body, etc. My wife is going through a difficult medical period. 
She can't, she has to take her CBD daily to get rid of her pain. So where, where, what a great opportunity. And, and good news is we're a small, very specialized company and we don't have a huge burn rate and we have revenues. And right. whenever we look at acquisitions or we look down the road to continue to improve our business, we look at revenues and profitability. And I think that if you can get there quicker than later and you're not burning lots and lots of capital, you know, I think that's the right, the right uh, space to be in. Right. Well, Marcello, I've gone way over time, but I'm so excited about what you're doing. I wanted to just keep talking to you. I, I hope that you'll come back and give us an update in a few months. This was uh, fantastic to learn to. about what you're doing, and I really appreciate you taking the time to have this conversation with me. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, your viewers, and thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Great. Thanks. Okay.